Hi everyone. So as promised, this is a very simplified version of photolithography that which I'll be discussing in this uh, lecture. Basically, I'm going to give you the the four or five major steps that are used in photolithography to give you an overview, to give you an idea of what we are trying to achieve uh, from this process altogether. Hmm. Okay. So if you remember, photolithography is basically patterning some structures into a photosensitive polymer. Hmm. So now we use the words like patterning and fabrication instead of manufacturing but the idea is to make something so what we have is a solid uh, wafer or solid substrate on top of that that we have a thin film of a polymer these kind of polymers are known as photoresists or commonly called just resists hmm. and then we somehow pattern a structure using the uv light on top of this resist Film. So that is known as the photolithography process. The inspiration from this process comes from photography. So in the past, we used to have these film cameras. There used to be a roll with film rolled on top of it. That film was nothing but a photoresist film. And when this film was exposed to the light, so whenever the shutter of the camera opened and then the film was exposed to the light, at that time, different wavelengths of light chemically changed that film material, the resist, in different ways and then once they were um, developed, we'll be discussing that once the film, if you must have heard the term that, you know, people used to develop the pictures. So basically the develop process is also used in photolithography and then you would get certain structures, they had a certain height, that film, the extremely thin film, but it had certain height. And those structures then could be in different colors or it depends on the, then it depends on the type of resist, resist and different types of processing methods, whether you'll have color pictures or black and white pictures and so on. Okay, so that is the inspiration of photo, uh, photolithography. As I already told you, the polymers are known as photoresist. Now, they are of two types. I also discussed this in the previous lecture. There is something called a positive photoresist and negative. The positive one will get degraded so that is the property of that material you have to develop a photoresist the chemists will um, you know design a material in such a way that it is uh, once it's exposed to a certain wavelength of the uv light also not the entire uv but certain wavelength they, are, they have the highest uh, absorption coefficient as a at a certain wavelength let's say 365 nanometer or 252 nanometer so at that particular wavelength they will get degraded with the highest intensity so that happens to the positive resist and negative resist they also have their absorption at a certain wavelength but negative resist will not degrade they will cross link and I will explain the mechanism of cross linking also okay in some cases especially in the case of uh, negative resist what we also do is something called post exposure baking because once the material has started cross linking the process of this there is a chain reaction that goes on. The process starts, but that process will only complete when we also heat it. We provide it some energy, some activation energy by heating. So that is known as the post exposure bake. Okay. Now, there are five main steps of photolithography. Number one, you spin coat a resist on top of a silicon wafer we are talking about silicon because most of the fabrication still done on silicon wafer but you can have any any hard substrate soft sub if you have a soft or if you want to make it on a flexible substrate what you will do is you will take whatever is your silicon wafer or any any hard thing and then you paste your polymer film or whatever is your substrate film on top of it and then do the entire processing and then remove that film peel it off but there will be sometimes these height differences and so on, which you have to be very careful. You can sometimes you have to vacuum attach it on top of your wafer. But anyway, let's talk about the hard substrates for now. So we take silicon wafer, which is extremely flat, by the way, and hard. And we pour a little bit of photoresist on top of it. So these resists are typically liquid uh, materials, which have a range of viscosities. Hmm. We'll also talk about that. So you pour the material on top of it. And then you rotate it at whatever 3000, 4000, sometimes 2000 uh, rotations per minute. And then what do you have? You have a thin film on top of your wafer. This process of spin coating is generally very reproducible. So you always will have the same thickness of film if you're using the same viscosity of the polymer and the 
given parameters which go with that polymer so with the rotation speed huh? so for example whatever resist x with 3000 rpm will always give you 25 micrometer high film and that will always happen because every time you rotate you spin this inside the spin quarter the extra resist doesn't matter if you pour 2 milliliter or 5 milliliter the extra resist will always get discarded and on your uh, wafer you'll always have whatever thickness was pre defined okay so this is how the spin coater would look like and here with that gray color i have uh, designed this silicon wafer and on top of that the orange color is your photoresist and then you spin coat it okay the second step is soft baking soft baking basically means you heat now your polymer to remove the solvent which is there in your polymer and also to slightly make your film uniform so if there are any um, you know uh, sometimes there are height differences or sometimes there is an air bubble trapped generally what happens when you heat it a little bit it becomes more uniform and flat film so this is the step which is done for all the resists because it also ensures that your next step which is you know attaching a mask on top of or placing a mask on top of your wafer or the polymer film you also want to make sure that the polymer does not damage if there is a, a lot of solvent in it it's very soft then it will damage your mask uh, which and masks are typically very expensive so you don't want that so that is why you'll perform the soft baking step um this you can do on a hot plate or you can also um in uh, do it inside an oven hmm. Now, the third step and the most important step is the exposure to the UV light. Why is it most important? Because you have to always uh, define the UV dose. Hmm. This is where it gets um, important that you and you need to learn, uh, you know, much more than what I'm going to describe in this slide. Um, UV light is not it's for different thicknesses of resist. You will have to provide different energy. And this energy is calculated depending upon the intensity of the UV lamp that you have. So how much energy is required per square centimeter, for example, for that particular resist in that particular height. And then you have to, how, for how many seconds you want to expose, expose your uh, wafer to the UV light. So what you will do is you will divide this energy with the lamp intensity and that will give you the number of seconds or the time for which you need to expose your uh, wafer to the UV light or the polymer film to the UV light. Okay, so that is the UV exposure uh, step. And remember that on for the exposure, what you need is you need a mask on top of it. Huh? A mask will typically have some holes. Now this thing doesn't have any holes or any pattern, but you'll have the. So this is how it will look like. Hmm. So this black and white thing. So black areas are shaded. That that's they are masked. Hmm. And white areas that you see in this picture, they are transparent. And this mask is typically on a quartz wafer. So UV light passes through the transparent areas, but it does not pass through the black or the shaded areas. It doesn't have to be black, when, but sometimes when you do printing, um, then they are the film masks have black structures on them. But there are uh, metal masks which are made of any metal, chromium for example, as long as the, it, it completely masks the UV light, we are good. Hmm. So this is the next step, which is the UV exposure. As I mentioned that in the case of only in the case of negative resist, you will have cross-linking, uh, pro, cross-linking propagation, which is done by the post-exposure bake. Sometimes people also perform post-exposure bake for, uh, for you, uh, for the, what is it, positive resist, but it's not necessary. But in the case of negative resist, it's very important because the UV exposure is only initiating the cross-linking process, but the propagation is taking place at the time of uh, of this baking hmm. Achha, the, after that what you will do this is uh, the next step is as i mentioned develop now this developing of the structure means when your for example some parts are cross linked then you then the the developer or this this is usually a chemical which comes with a certain photoresist, there are different types of different uh, brands, different chemicals, different types of photoresist. So every photoresist will have a certain chemical which is used for developing it. Hmm. So this developer will dissolve the parts that are not cross-linked and the cross-linked parts will remain. And in the case of positive resist, of course, it will, the degraded parts will dissolve and the 
not degraded parts will remain there. Okay, now the last step would be, so this is basically these four main steps are there. For, so after developing the structure, you will see something on the, on the wafer. Hmm. But after that, when you wash it, you will typically wash it with certain chemicals also, isopropyl alcohol and also depending on the resist again, which chemical you use, but you will completely wash it. And now afterwards, you need to check what is there. Did you, were you able to successfully make what you wanted to make? So typically this inspection will be done under a microscope, depending on the size of your structures. You can also use the scanning electron microscope. Okay, so as I mentioned before, negative resist will, will cross-link. So what does that mean? Which That means that you need to um, expose those areas that you want in your final structure, which means that the, the, the shaded areas should be the opposite of what you finally want in your design. That is the reason because of this being opposite, this is why it is called a negative photoresist. Hmm. And positive photoresist, basically the term positive comes from whatever is the structure on your mask, it will be your final structure as well. So when you design a mask, this is what you need to keep in mind. Hmm. Okay, now these masks are either fabricated onto foil like transparencies if you've seen in the past. So you can basically do printing with some specialized inks. But this kind of printing method only works for structure sizes of, of you know, uh, up to four, uh, 25 micrometer. But smaller than 25 micrometer structures will typically require more expensive masks, which are prepared using electron beam lithography, which we'll learn later. Electron beam lithography using the chrome or chromium as the metal. And that is then, that can give you very fine feature sizes like down to 5 micrometer and so on, even smaller than 5 have been reported. Okay.